Good evening, Mr. President, distinguished uh, delegates, uh, and civil society representatives. Uh, it is indeed a privilege and an honor for me, on behalf of the African <coughs> Union of the Blind, uh, that's represented in 53 countries uh, in Africa, uh, a member of the World Blind Union, and a member of the Secretariat for the African Decade of Persons with Disability, as well as the South African National Council of the Blind and the Right to, right to Read Coalition, uh, to make this statement in acknowledging uh, the work undertaken by the, the World Blind Union uh, through the leadership of Marianne Diamond, Dan Prescott, Chris Friend, and the guidance and support uh, that we've had from KEI, led by Jamie, Jamie, Jamie Love and uh, Man and Res. It was indeed a trying experience uh, for many of us that have been in, engaged uh, in the negotiations uh, as accredited observers at WIPO over the past four years. Uh, and on, on occasions, we would come to Geneva and go back to report to our constituencies with not much to offer them in terms of hope. Our concern also when we arrived here a week ago that the main issues of contention around uh, cross-border exchange, uh, TPMs, uh, direct distribution to beneficiary uh, persons, and translation, we're going to, as well as commercial availability, we're going to be some of the, uh, the, the, the issues that blind people in Africa, in particular, uh, gave a mandate to say, but these are non-negotiable components. And please ensure that in the negotiations being done by uh, our country, uh, representatives and the, uh, the support that we would, uh, or the lobby that we would provide uh, to these delegates, consider these important factors. Since the largest number of blind and visually impaired persons are from this continent, the lack of access to information and knowledge has led to high levels of unemployment low levels of skills and the proposed treaty that was drafted by the WBU and sponsored by Brazil, Ecuador, Mexico and Paraguay was a beacon of hope for blind and visually impaired persons. So therefore, when late on Tuesday night we heard the news that we're reaching consensus and with the adoption of the draft uh, uh, treaty yesterday, we are very elated today to, 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 to know that, Mr. President, through your able leadership, we were able to have the Marrakesh, the Marrakesh Treaty, which will provide access to, 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 to blind and visually impaired persons in this continent and thereby will be part of the pro-poor policies that we'd have to ensure that we can build the capacity and the leadership of blind and visually impaired persons to take their rightful place in social development, economic and civil participation in this continent as well as to participate on an equal footing with global colleagues. We would like to urge the African Union through the Africa Group that all African states sign and ratify the treaty as a matter of urgency and without delay that WIPO provides technical support 
to the WBU, AFUB, and other INGOs, together with our member states, to increase the advocacy and an awareness for the domestication of the treaty into national instruments so that the, the goals of the treaty as intended would be of benefit to improving the quality of life of blind and visually impaired persons in Africa. Mr. President, the African Union of the Blind would like to congratulate the Kingdom of Morocco and yourself for the hospitality and the able leadership that you've had. And we are indeed delighted that this international treaty is an African treaty adopted on African soil here in Marrakesh, Morocco. Thank you very much for this opportunity of being part of a very important and historic occasion. However, this treaty would be meaningless if we don't accompany it with the necessary actions so that blind and visually impaired persons can be the intended beneficiaries. Thank you very much.